All right, everyone, welcome to a new uh, series of segments where I talk about the nonlinear differential equation. So far, I have been focusing our efforts towards linear equations, different types of homogeneous, non homogeneous, higher order, this way, that way, etc., right? But everything was linear. But the very first thing that I want to highlight over here, very difficult to solve and study. Solve and study, right? So that will kind of hit you right, right off the bat, right? Um, and interesting thing is I only have few solution methods. Most of the nonlinear equations I cannot solve it analytically. I'm not talking about numerically, I'm talking about analytically in this course, right? So analytically I may not have a solution. And the most of the cases, yeah, that, that falls into that particular category. And I will also talk about a huge uh, deal breaker for, for me Solutions cannot be superimposed. So do you remember this? Uh, well, you, you, you better do remember this. So if I have like y1 and y2 are the solutions, do you remember that? I was writing y is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2, right? So now this may not work, okay? Uh, let's say C1 is, uh, you know, I mean, actually forget about C1 and C2, but let's say Y1 plus Y2 may not be a solution, okay? If I put C1 is equal to 1, C2 is equal to 1, right? So this brings significant complexity, right? I have been taking advantage of, the, of this since the beginning of this entire um, experience that we are having together, right? This whole uh, class. Let's uh, illustrate my point. So let's say that a simple uh, nonlinear equation. Obviously, first thing I'm going to ask you, why is this nonlinear? Right, so this is nonlinear because of that. Uh, y prime, y double prime square. Okay, and I'll actually go ahead and give you the solution for this. Y one will be equal to e to the x. You can solve this by the end of this module. You will see that you will be able to solve this equation yourself. But I'm going to give you a solution because I didn't really talk about it just yet. These will be the two solutions for for this particular nonlinear differential equation. So at this point, my goal would be to just simply uh, verify that they are the solution. Okay, so let's pick the first one, y1 uh, prime will be equal to e to the x, right? y1 double prime will also be equal to e to the x, so that's kind of straightforward. And if I plug this in, you're going to say e to the x squared minus e to the x squared. Uh, well, well, you're good. So this, this, you are verifying that this y1 is indeed a solution. So let's go with the y2. So if I have the y2 is equal to cosine of x, y2 prime will be equal to minus sine of x, don't forget the minus, and y2 double prime will be minus the cosine of x, right? So if I go ahead and plug this in, you'll see that minus cosine of x squared minus y is um, cosine of x squared. And you can see when I take the square of it, minus sine doesn't matter and this becomes a solution as well. Okay, so far I have verified that this is indeed a solution, this is indeed a solution. So now I will actually go ahead and show you that uh, forget about c1 and c2, but I want to just simply go out and say the simplest case, which is e to the x plus cosine of x. So basically this is, you know, y1 plus y2. So let's assess whether this is a solution indeed, okay? Um, obviously, to do that, I will have to take the derivative of this, and that will be e to the x minus sine of x, right? Um, kind of like combining these two, right? Because of the rules of uh, differentiation, so I simply add them up, right, these two. And so y double prime will be again e to the x minus cosine of x. So then let me verify if this is a solution or not. So e to the x minus cosine of x square minus the original was e to the x plus cosine of x, right? Square. Um, at this point, you may be seeing that there's no way this will be the same, right? Uh, you know, but let me just do it quickly e to the 2x, right? x squared minus 2 e to the x cosine of x plus cosine square x, right? Minus of e to the 2x plus 2 e to the x cosine f x plus cosine square of x. And you can see over here that these two will cancel, these two will cancel, but well, what about these? You can see that they're not going to cancel because there's a negative sign in front of it, negative, negative, negative. So I get myself the solution is, as you can see, minus 4 e to the x cosine of x, which is not equal to zero, so this is not a solution. You see, my everything that I've been discussing so far have blown to pieces. So that is not good. I'm not very happy at all. 
So also the approach that uh, most of us take when we have something like this is I look at the if it is higher I mean higher than second actually I'm not going to introduce anything at third order or more okay higher uh, than second let's call it that way uh, order non linear DE are often solved numerically and we have packages for that you can have MATLAB uh, Mathematica is the one that I personally know well but there's you know so many of them um, so let me um, you know I said I was kind of pessimistic so far right did you realize that you know about this whole uh, segment but well like why don't I why don't I introduce a solution uh, method then see what happens okay and in this one you will feel like okay I, I, I kind of feel like I've seen this before well you did reduction of order we talked about this in uh, you know earlier uh, higher order differential equation segment it was a linear equation and if I know one of the solutions I can use that to reduce the order of the differential equation from the second to the first right and then the first uh, order differential equation there has been many many different approaches that we have established I go out and solve it right um, I don't mean exactly the same obviously in here uh, there will be some uh, you know overlap and the overlap is this if I have a second order nonlinear DE I will go out and reduce the order to that to the first order DE but I will put a caveat over here so I want to make this maybe like uh, this so it can hit you either the dependent or independent you know the differences between those two we talked about this many times um, variable must be missing so this is a special type of uh, equation this is only applicable if the one of the either the dependent or independent variable is missing right so I can go ahead and reduce the second order differential equation to the first order and obviously you must uh, ask me how right well let me tell you how you're gonna do the substitution of u is equal to y prime okay regardless of whether y is missing or x is missing you're gonna do u is equal to y prime and I will actually go ahead and solve uh, you know a couple examples where in some cases x is missing and in some cases y is missing so you will see how to approach these two cases there will be slight differences in the approach that I take uh, even let's say that uh, you know this is missing and this is second order this may not be possible I just want to highlight so obviously I will focus on the ones that I can do right I don't want to just start a question and at the end oops sorry I can't do it right I'll give you an example and we will do that so you can see over here that this is nonlinear the reason is that this is squared right and you can see over here I have an X but I don't see any Y multiplied by the differential terms that you see over here right so then I will actually do exactly what I just said well it's right here right it's kind of you know convenient so I will kind of go ahead and do the same u is equal to y prime and you can see in the equation I have y double prime so then the goal is to get the y double prime and you will see fairly simple u prime will be equal to y double prime right so now if I plug this in you're gonna see u prime right y double prime is equal to u prime will be equal to 2x well there's nothing you can do about it times y prime it was u square so do you now see that this is uh, you know uh, separable also what is u prime uh, you know that this is du dx right du dx not du dy du dx because x is the independent variable so now you can see in here let me write it du dx is equal to 2x u square I mean I think you can see this that this is separable right so you can see that du by u square will be equal to 2x dx right I just separated in a different side of the equation and I take the integral of both sides I'm not going to show you the uh, detail because it's fairly doable we have been practicing this for a while don't forget the negative is what I would recommend you um, will be equal to x squared plus c1 let's call this c1 okay then I will uh, simply because I'm not interested in 1 over u I'm interested in u so I will simply rewrite this so it's going to be u will be equal to minus 1 by x squared plus c1 so this is it you know box it up no 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 we have one more step to do this is something that we talked about but we didn't really you know 
insert it back. So let's insert it back. Okay. So I get myself dy by dx is equal to minus 1 by x squared plus c1. So if I do this, dy will be equal to minus dx by x squared plus c1. Right. Um, so now I'm going to take the integral of both sides. Actually, just to remind you, I have done this before. But if I have integral 1 by a squared plus u squared, right, du, that will be 1 over a arc tangent u by a plus in the integration constant, you can imagine that part, right? So I will follow this, uh, you know, what we established before. So y will be minus 1 by square root of c1 arc tangent x by square root of c1 plus c2, right? That's what I'm going to get. But again, I want to just square root of c1 doesn't look nice. So I'm going to call 1 by square root of c1 as, I don't know, c3. So then y will be minus c3 tangent arc tangent of c3x plus c2. Now I will go ahead and box this up. Okay. This will be the final answer that I was uh, looking for. Um, you know, you, did you see this, right? You know, just to look nicer. That's all. You know, because c1 is an arbitrary constant, I can take the square root of it and I can do 1 over and I call it another arbitrary constant. Okay. So this, this establishes this the process when you can see over here that I didn't have any y over here. I have an x, but I don't have any y over here. Okay. Now I will go ahead and do another example. In this another example, I will have this one this time. Y plus one y double prime is equal to y prime squared. Okay. What's happening in here? What do I not have? I don't have x in here. I only have x, I didn't have y. So in here, I have y. So I can still use my approach. This is a second order. I can do a substitution. I can go for it. So I want to write this over here as, as a reminder to me. x is missing. Okay? So, well, I said u is equal to y prime. And this, uh, so this y prime will be dy dx. You know that, right? dy dx. So my goal is to get y double prime. But you can see here, as I don't have an x over here, if I do the separation of variables, I don't want to leave this, this by dx. Okay, I want to, you know, when I have the y double prime, I want to write this way. You'll see. Again, there's nothing I can do about it. This is going to be du dx, right? That's how it's defined. But what I can do is I can do this. du dy dy dx. Can I do this? Of course, why not? Right? So dy dx is something that uh, you may see right away. This is you, right? Right up here. You know, right here dy dx u. So I simply put u in here. And so you will see that this is going to be u d dy. Okay. Again, the point that I'm trying to make in here is I don't want to ha have an x over here because I don't have an x. I have a y. So that's why I want to leave here as y. Okay. Okay. And the next step is actually fairly, uh, you know, uh, doable. So I'll simply go ahead and insert what I did find out. y plus 1 times u d dy. That's, this is y double prime, right? will be equal to y prime, which is u, square. You see why I did this? Now I have u only and y only, right? So that I can do separation of variables, right? So if I do separation of variables, uh, you can kind of see that these two cancel. So I have u over there. So let's see, du, du by u, right? That's what I get on the left-hand side. And I get myself dy by y plus 1. Okay, take the integral of both sides, ln u will be equal to ln y plus 1, that's it. Nope, integration constant of c1. So if I uh, manipulate this a little bit, you'll see that I'll get mass of u by y plus 1, because it, this term goes to this side as a negative, so it becomes a division, right? ln u by y plus 1 will be equal to the same integration constant of c1. I have been doing this for a while, you'll know what is coming, right? I'll take the e to the power of both sides. Um, well, let's do it. When I do e to the power of ln u by y plus 1, I will get myself u by y plus 1 is equal to e to the c1. And I'll call this k1. Why not, right? e to the power of c1 is, again, an arbitrary constant. I get myself another arbitrary constant. Is that it? You know, am I done? 
not quite I have this one right this was dy dx so now I will go back and insert this over here u by y plus 1 dy dx is equal to an integration constant of k1 I can see you can see over here I can still do the separation of variables I have dy divided by y plus 1 k1 times dx right so you can I can take the integral of both sides I'll get ln y plus 1 even I can do this right k1x plus another integration constant of k2 okay guess what I'm gonna do e to the power of both sides right so e to the power of ln y plus 1 is equal to y plus 1 uh, so this will be e to the power of k1x plus k2 which will be equal to e to the k1x times e to the k2 so e to the k2 is k3 so I get myself y plus 1 is equal to k3 e to the k1x and if I just do this way you will see that I'll get k3 e to the k1x minus 1 so that will be my explicit solution okay so I think I made my point about this particular approaches I'll do one more harder question uh, and then call the day for this particular segment okay I'll be right, right back with another segment thank you